Good morning, or good evening, although it's the afternoon in fact, third time lucky. I'm uh, walking with my young son George, who needs no introduction, for people that watch my output on this channel using that post on a regular basis. I'm walking through what's Platz Gabriela Narutovica which I've also shown before on this channel although not exactly from this angle. I, I rarely walk it on this angle. I usually walk from that other side of the road I'll make sure I don't get knocked down but uh, one of the things that this is where there's got quite a lot of interesting things going on in that park area there. I did the scarecrow the scarecrow thing this fashion show is actually over there I've filmed it several times and I've I think I've sh this has appeared as well this church here although not up close the reason for doing that today is that it's actually Easter Saturday I think that's the term that um, people that are big on church year call it between Good Friday and uh, an Easter Sunday so it's a, a time when either Roman Catholics generally, or at least Polish style Roman Catholics, um, well they don't do much. But one thing they do do is they take to church their um, little baskets. There's somebody going in there now with a basket of, it's not so much there's a lot of food in it, it's a couple of eggs and some decorations. Uh, they get it blessed. They get there's a gentleman going with this is his basket as well. So they're going to church with these baskets, decorative baskets with the odd. There's somebody else going with a little wicker basket um, with bits of bread in, bits of eggs in, and they go in. This is called Roman Catholic Church. So this is a to the Holy Mother Matko with an explanation mark 1382 to 1982 to 3 I don't know whether that's the times which it was built over they took their time over it and uh, it's called the uh, Parafialny you'd call that, what would you call that? you'd call that um, hmm, Parish Church isn't it? Parish is Parafia Parish Church PW um, not quite sure what that abbreviation means, but Nipokalenego Pochencha and Shunchimaripani, the most holy um, lady or, or virgin, well, virgin in this case, uh, Mary, the most holy virgin Mary of the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception is a Roman Catholic idea dating from, I can't remember which of the councils it was. What it refers to is not that, um, I look at them all going, but each one's got their baskets and they're coming in and going out like almost a production line, getting them blessed. So there we are. In they go, water gets sprinkled on them from some branches, which is supposed to echo, I suppose, the hyssop and the sprinkling with hyssop done in the Old Testament temple. Um, this of course referring to the sprinkling with the blood of Christ but it's obviously it's very ritualized and most Protestants don't go a bundle on it I don't do this for example there's somebody just coming out there with now with a basket almost everybody's walking with a basket so uh, I don't know if you would call them basket cases but uh, they've all got baskets in any event so it's uh, it's uh, a doctrine the, the the doctrine of the of the Immaculate Conception is a Roman Catholic doctrine that refers not so much to the fact that, well, in fact it doesn't refer to the conception of Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost as Immaculate. This wasn't a doctrine from the Middle Ages. This was a doctrine of Christianity from the very beginning. The uh, New Testament clearly states, and doesn't need to be stated ex cathedra, that um, that the, that the uh, Virgin Mary, at least virgin at the time of Jesus' conception, had not known a man. 
And that's what's special about Jesus Christ, of course, that he was not um, conceived in the usual way. You don't have to take that back one generation and make Mary need to be specially prepared uh, in a way which isn't actually human. In fact, what it does is it, to do that, you like parking meters, you should watch Muzzy in Gondoland. Come on. Um, what it actually does is it detracts from the, from the real humanity of Christ if you then have him already several generations in. If you have to have Mary also being immaculately conceived, then what about her mother? Didn't she also need to be immaculately conceived as well? You don't need for Mary to have been immaculately conceived for Jesus Christ to be the perfect bridge between God and man, being both 100% a human being and also 100% uncreated God. So, in fact, if you do anything to that, that uh, Mary was an ordinary woman, but just found favour, favour in the sight of the Lord, as she put it herself, uh, then you actually attack the doctrine of the Trinity. So uh, what you have in the case of the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception, when it's applied to Mary herself having been conceived immaculately and having been specially prepared in a way which is not normal for human beings, you take, you remove from Jesus Christ the glory and you give that one stage up in his genetic family and it's of course idolatrous it's all part and parcel of the idolatry of Mary which is carried over from the goddess worship that was done in Europe through pagan times also linked into a lot of the goddess worship done in in the Greek pantheon and uh, it's something which ought not to have been adopted by the church, but the church didn't want to take away either holidays or, or personalities or too much else either from either food or, or customs regarding trees from the heathen calendar where they went. They didn't want to be seen as people that take, took people's pleasures away. But similarly, when they went into areas which had been pagan, and the Muslims didn't want to take away their uh, love of pilgrimages and they, uh, they borrowed pilgrimage, the whole idea of pilgrimage, and enshrined it into, into the Quran. Things which actually were already being done by pagans to Mecca and Medina. And uh, Muhammad was pressurised by people from those places to include those places as objects of pilgrimage still in the Quran so that he didn't break... Um, his family and friends in those places didn't break their business model. So there you go, that's how spiritual that was. And of course you get on to the, the issue of why Christianity has pilgrimage. Um, of course Christianity is a pilgrimage and they talk about Christianity being like a pilgrimage with pilgrims and sojourners in the earth, it says in the New Testament. But whether that means that that's at various times of the year. There's another nice basket there. Basket one hand, cigarette in the other, lovely. Um, maybe he can get his cigarette blessed as well while he's at it. Maybe it won't give him cancer then. And uh, so, so what you have is, going back to pilgrimage, do you need to have, at various times of the year, organised walks? Especially when what's available at the end of the walk is usually, again, it's another idol, another piece of art score, scored out or sc scraped out of wood by human hand and imbued with divine properties so that people can make it the object of their adoration in a way which specifically comes against the, the precepts, the divine precepts set out in the, uh, in the Old Testament most clearly in Exodus 20 Thou shalt not make unto thyself a graven image so, clearly you had uh, a lot of Islam was a, uh, which is interesting because you've got Islamic symbolry going on there, but uh, um, a lot of Islam was, uh, was a, as a reaction against the idolatry that 
went into the church. Of course, they went too far. Uh, they regarded worship of Jesus Christ also as idolatrous. Didn't understand that he was God. They wanted a God where one means one. We believe in one God, but God is capable of being one God and three gods, three persons. He's not three gods, he's three persons in the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. They see that as three gods. They can't understand that one God can be in three persons. And that one of those persons is that person of the divine who became human. So they regarded that as also idolatrous. So they overreacted to the idolatry. Muhammad, disgusted quite rightly by idolatrous practice, unfortunately made the mistake of going overboard and re redesigning Jesus. And he redesigns Jesus in the Quran as not being God, not dying for us, not shedding his blood, as being the ultimate sacrifice that needs never to be repeated and which is accepted by simple faith in Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. He went too far, rejected that, went back to something which was rather more similar I suppose to pre-Messianic worship and actually resembles in many ways the aspects of the initial Jewish religion which of course they hate even though they say that they that they respect the uh, the Bible, the Torah, the Psalms of David, the prophets. They say that they respect all of this, but they say that the Jews lost their way and got it all wrong. So, and that they're the ones who, thanks to Muhammad, have managed to interpret it all properly, even though they've twisted it about in no uncertain terms. Some of what's written in the Quran, of course, echoes quite strongly Old Testament and in some cases even New Testament ideas. Well, that's not surprising. It came afterwards and they had a lot to copy from and twist around. But uh, other parts of it are really dire. And what you should do, I suppose, is is read it for yourself, although I suggest you pray beforehand for divine protection so that you don't get the devil pretending to be God and speak to you through the Quran. But by all means read it. I do. Dip into it occasionally. I haven't read the whole thing, I have to admit I'm going to. But you do need to pray that God will give you the right insights. God's perfectly capable of guiding people in, the worship, in, in, in worshipping him either via the reading of the Bible or through prayer based on the Bible and he's also capable of making Christians find where the errors are with their discernment as they read things which are nonsense too. So... I take a confident attitude towards it. And here we are coming out now into the famous, more famous area of Warsaw, the Palace of Culture over there appearing. So there you go, a little bit of religious discourse for an Easter Saturday. Happy Easter. Right, something else worth the film while I'm over in this part. Just uh, still walking with my son here. Same day, Easter Saturday. Here you can see well, there's even some, uh, some uh, iron railing still there, which is amazing. And of course the ending and the, the buffer at the end. Obviously a railway came here and ended a sort of siding, a shunting area from the main railway came up here and just ended there. A few metres away from where this disused historic railway is, we now come to a, a railway of the future. I'm not sure whether anything will be visible. I suppose there's no harm in filming this because it's not exactly a big strategic issue, but uh, what is going on behind this green fence is where we're building the second line of the Warsaw Metro, the Warsaw Underground System. This is all built off so they can build a station there. Um, 
I think it's called Rondo Dashinskigo Station, which is, I think, going to be the end one for the time being, at the extreme west of the second line of the of the metro. It's not far west. We're still in the centre, as you can see. This is the central business district. You can see the interesting, the Marvi Pole business building there. With it's interesting profile. Looks fit to fall over. A lot of these Warsaw skyscrapers. That one there looks a bit wonky as well. So the Deu building. There's the IPN building there, the building for institution of the national memory, as they call it, Institut Paminci Narodove. All of this, of course, is the former ghetto that we're looking across at there. The former Warsaw ghetto has been redeveloped and has very good um, land under it for that will support fairly tall building. So this is all going to be completely different. A lot of Israeli capital has gone into quite a few of those buildings. Um, so it's it's good to see that uh, Jewish people have, have decided that they're not going to just leave this as a dingy place, but they're going to bring it to life. They're going to bring it back, they're going to resurrect it. So uh, this was a historic area where Jews lived and they feel some kind of affinity and responsibility for it not without of course immense sadness for what happened here but the way to go forward is the positive way to build and to remember so there we are, that's the new building, you can see some digging going on there and the central business district.